patient has been wearing a denture with some fall attachments over the past five or six years. And these have gradually become a little bit loose. So today what we're going to do is to take these fall attachment housings out and take the fall attachments off the implants, then place some locators on, and then uh, come back in and add the locators into the denture chair side. So here we are taking out the old fall attachment housings and these can be easily removed with a diamond, a very tapered slender diamond. Locators are metal studs that get attached to implants and they're made for different implant systems. And then what you do is place a metal housing into the denture. And so you provide a space for these housings and then a plastic resilient cap will be snapping inside of the metal housing. To add the metal housing you need a space but also a little relief point at the lingual side of the denture so that the resin can get expressed out as you put this back in. Now here this shows the two ball attachments and we're going to remove these with the torque wrench. And there's an attachment you can add on to the torque wrench which snaps down on top of the ball attachment and enables you to easily remove this assembly. And once you take it out, you actually can use finger pressure once you get it loosened. And this will enable you to easily remove this. And some of these are single piece. This is actually a double piece ball attachment. But uh, these were great, but the ball attachments are actually a little higher than what the locator is. So we're actually going to gain a little room. So we use a locator mandrel, which is a latch that goes into the torque wrench. And this enables us to be able to put the locator on. Now in order to pick locators, one thing you can, you can do is go to my YouTube video about this. And if you type in SM McLean, you'll find that. So once the locator is tightened down with this mandrel, then we're going to make sure that it's sitting about one millimeter above the tissue once the cap is on. So you can try the cap on to do this. Once we know that it's the right height, we're going to tighten the abutment down to approximately 25 newtons. And this will enable us to make sure it's stable for the attachment to be picked up in the denture. Now here you can see the height difference between the locator and the ball. And it's actually quite something. So we're going to remove the other attachment and uh, start to put a locator on that particular spot as well. And you can see here that we're going to be adding an abutment on and the abutment is actually a little bit shorter because this implant is a tiny bit higher and we want these two locators to be at the same height. It's ideal they're at the same height and here you can see how nice this actually is. So being at the same height you're going to get the same kind of pivot point on the locator itself. So now our goal is to tighten this down to about 25 newtons and then it's going to be easy for us to come back and start to pick these up in the mouth with the denture. Now the first thing we want to do is to try the denture and to make sure it, it fits over these locators because we want to have enough space to pick up the housings and pick up the uh, studs so it's actually very easy to do. We use a, a little white block out ring to actually prevent the resin from sliding down the side of the implant. So this is placed on and then the cap is placed using the black uh, standard type of impression cap inside of the metal housing as you can see here in the corner. So once this is put on it sits about a millimeter above the tissue this would be the ideal position for the locator attachment. So later we're able to change the attachment to a different type of color but we're going to use black for the impression. It is important to try the denture back in again over these metal housings to make sure that there's enough space for everything plus the resin. So when we do the pickup that we're not kind of fumbling around. So if we have to do a little bit of modification we can do that prior to trying to do this pickup impression technique of the housings themselves. So we're going to place a little bit of triad VLC bonding agent on the denture itself after a little bit of micro etching of the area. And the area is going to be retentive that way. So you apply the uh, bonding agent and then this is going to be light cured. So you can do this in a triad oven or you can use your chair side light. We're using a Swiss Master light here which is a rapid light so it takes about three seconds to four seconds to give a standard curing but we do this about four or five times to make sure that that uh, triad VLC bonding agent is, is uh, cured. Now we're going to take some dual line resin 
from Dense Supply, which is a, a dual cure resin. And we're going to take that to the mouth. We'll apply a little bit of bonding agent right on the capsules themselves, which will enable them to be slightly wet and then try to keep the whole thing dry. So we'll light cure this to make sure that that material is going to stay on those caps. And then we're going to bring the denture to the mouth. By bringing the denture to the mouth, we're going to fill the triad dual line resin into the little housing uh, pits that we've created. So we inject this in. And so this will cure by itself, but we're also going to cure it with some light. And any excess is going to flow through those little holes that we created at the start of the procedure. So we place this in the mouth. Now it's important not to bite too heavy because this would push the denture down too far. So we want just a light bite for this part and then start to do some curing with lights to make sure that that stays in position. So we want to make sure that the patient has been told not to bite too hard in this procedure. It's recommended to let the self-cure time go by about five minutes to make sure that that resin is actually fully cured around those metal capsules of the locators. And then we're going to try to remove this from the mouth. So you kind of just pull it up. The black resilient caps are going to pull a little bit of resistance, but not too bad. When we take this off, you're going to see the little rings that were preventing the resin from entering down around the implant are going to be still kind of attached. And so you're going to take a sickle or some type of small instrument and just kind of pull them off. And then this is going to allow you to go in and clean up the resin, any little pieces of flash. So it's a very simple procedure. You just take a round burr and come in and kind of doctor that up a little bit and make it kind of cleaned up. Then once we do this, we're going to check for any voids around the housings themselves. You can see a little void here. So I'll add a little bit more resin and then light cure this and make sure that they're fully secure around that particular area. You can just smooth it out with a little micro brush as well. So once we have this all completed, it's now time to take out the black impression caps so we can add some resilient caps. And so the resilient caps are going to have certain pounds of pressure based on what color they are. So we're going to put the blue ones in on this case. That's a 1.5 pound pressure. And this is going to allow us to have a certain amount of snap. And I find most patients like the blue and it's a good place to start. So if the patient has the ability to accommodate to the blue, then you stay there. If not, then you can increase the amount of uh, snap on the patient by changing the color of the liner. To add the blue liners, what you do is you use the little tool that you use to remove the black liners. There's another component of this particular tool that allows you to push the little blue liners into the housing. So it's kind of a very smooth-ended part of the tool. And so this tool allows you to kind of snap them in. You'll get this kind of feeling of a snap that occurs. You'll hear a little click noise. And so they get clicked in place and they actually stay in there quite well. And you'll notice that when we put the second one in, it's going to click in just as easily. And on these blue ones, they have a retention aspect on the outside of the cap and also on the inside of the cap. That's why there's a little blue circle on the middle of the inside of the locator cap. So we're going to take this back to the mouth and try this in and uh, make it uh, really fit quite well. But before we do that, we're just going to polish the lingual aspect of the flange because we had the area where the resin kind of expressed out because we want to make sure not too much resin is there so it doesn't hold us down on top of the denture too far or too high or too low. So we polish this up and get it looking good and then the patient is able to go home and try this out with the new locator supported overdenture. So we're here with the patient about a week after having the new locators inserted and we're just going to ask a few questions. Uh, how did you feel about the, the new attachments versus your old attachments? The difference is unbelievable. I, I didn't expect there to be that much of a difference. Comfort level, um, the secure feeling of them, they're, they're just, I wish we'd done this long before. <laughs>